I've got a bell jam tool here, the ones that you can't get anymore. We'll see if that'll loosen this. If it won't, I've got another tool there that certainly will. That is very tight. Let's put a more robust spanner in here. Oh, that's that's loose. There's our shutter assembly that in the inside of that rear group looks bloody awful. There's all sorts of rubbish on that. I don't even know what it is. It could be graphite powder. It might be some other sort of filth. It'll certainly need to be uh, carefully cleaned if that's ever going to take photos. The body. What have we got left here? All, all sorts, really. This ring here is the coupling for the rangefinder. That loose screw was loose. Its mate was tight, that's okay. This is the screw on the end of the arm that moves the rangefinder. Take that arm out. I've cleaned that manually. The shroud here can come off. This is... Oh, come on, you stupid birds. The screw heads here are a little bit damaged looking. It means somebody with poor technique was having a go at that. Or poor screwdrivers. If your screwdrivers are all out of shape and mutilated looking on the ends they're never going to do a tidy job of taking screws out so the focus scale ring I want to mark the position of that on the outer helical so that I know exactly where it came from because with a little bit of luck that's exactly where it needs to go back So we'll do that, we'll mark the outer helical, there's a bit of someone's hair there, not mine. Put two lines here. At the base, from my focus scale ring to the outer helical, and I'll put one across the top. I scraped, scraped, scraped that in with the end of a scalpel. Now it's not uncommon to find other alignment marks that other people have put there on previous occasions. If you can decipher their marks and work out what they were intended to say, then by all means just use them. But um, I find it more convenient to make my own marks in the same place every time so I know where to look for them and can easily recognize them. Now the outer helical and the inner helical need to be marked relative to each other so that I know how they fit together. Normally I make my mark where they are level with each other. At the moment the inner heli outer helical is lower than the inner helical. Let's see if we can move that around a bit further. It may or may not move that far. It really wants a little bit more than that. I might not be able to get it. Give me a pair of robust tweezers. These ones. And we'll see if we can just smooth bring that around a little bit further. Here we can. 
who are at the inner and outer are in line with each other now and I will continue my marks that I'd made previously across to the inner helical. So I know that when those marks are aligned, the inner and outer helical are level with each other at the front. It means that I'll be able to reassemble them in the correct position. Four screws here hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. They're black screws. And the bellows can now be released back into the body. I'll remove this whole focus mount from the front standard. There are four large nickel plated screws. They're loose in this case and they'll be loose. Because they're loose it means that the shutter and lens assembly would not have been firmly fixed and uh, may have rattled a bit. It means that your focus could be subtly out from where you thought it was going to be. Six screws hold the retainer ring. Just gather up all those screws. The four black ones that passed right through. Now the retainer ring, the inner and outer helical are well stuck in here with dried grease. I can separate those. Ah, oh, very sticky. This piece I'll clean by hand because it's got paint on it and because it's got the felt on the back of it. What have we got left here? The struts assembly. You want the struts out of the body. One screw at the top. Will it come loose? Yeah, just. At the bottom of the camera, there's one here. I'm going to need to have this on a block of wood and that's going to need some hitting with a hammer. Right, well with my very robust but somewhat damaged screwdriver that's been designated to be impact driver, we'll give that a couple of sharp taps and immediately I was able to turn that screw. There are two screws in the film cassette chamber here and I want to get those loose and they will probably require the same treatment with the hammer. I'll just do that off camera because it's easier to hold the camera between my knees to do this. One. You just need a sharp tap to loosen the screws or break the screws loose. You give it a sharp tap while you're applying some torque to the screwdriver and the screws will come loose. You don't need to hit them really hard. You're not trying to drive the screws back through the camera. Okay, there's our struts assembly. As you can see, it's pretty filthy. Um, I'm having a quick look over it, see if it's bent. It doesn't look too bad. Here's the transfer shaft that drives the shutter, cocks the shutter. There's the little bracket that holds it in position. There's a spacer washer from the base of the camera in the same position as that, trend, that bracket. There's the return spring for our film uh, shutter release. And that is just about us. So let's get this out. That's our sprocket shaft. 
a single screw holds the sprocket or drives the sprocket from the sprocket shaft. Remove that. So, oh, parts for the ultrasonic cleaner. Parts to be cleaned by hand, including this. And the body too, of course, I'll clean by hand. Put these off to the ultrasonic cleaner for a good burst in solvent and then a good burst in uh, very hot water with um, a strong domestic detergent. Well, I can start putting this thing back together, I think. I've got the body all clean. Zeiss bumps are gone. Get rid of that piece of green rubbish. Even the one on the hinge line, I was able to work out how to achieve that. I'll tell you about that another day. That was a clever trick. We'll get the spring on there. The cocking shaft, the shaft that uh, takes the action of the cocking rack through to the front of the camera where it can cock the shutter, that goes in here. There's a little bracket that holds that in position and I'll get that positioned in there. And the struts have all been cleaned. They didn't really require much in the way of adjustment. They were in quite good order. Very filthy, but um, in quite good order. So I'll get this swing swung around to the correct orientation. Get that on there. Lower this into the body without disturbing that bracket that I carefully put there just minutes before. And I should be able to get one screw in through that bracket to hold everything together. Now that screw is particularly ugly with the remains of leather in it, so I know it came from the base of the camera. That one doesn't look particularly pretty, we'll put it up here. And the two best screws, the two prettiest screws, will reserve for the film cassette chamber. Where has that screwdriver gone? Here it is. Get that screw started. The washer. There's a spacer washer that goes in in the same relative position as that bracket at the top of the camera. A washer goes in at the base of the camera. It serves acts as a spacer. I just slid that into position. I can just about see the hole through there. We can put that screw in place. That's the ugly one with the remains of the leather in it. Do that up lightly. There are two screws in the film cassette chamber. They should be the prettiest of the two of the uh, four black screws. That's one. And here's the other. With all four screws in place, I can now tighten those screws up. Don't go tightening up screws until they're all in position. Otherwise, you'll inevitably find that you can't get one in position. That's it. The struts are all in place, back in the body, exactly as they should be. And the next thing that I've got to do is get the focus mount done. The focus mount should just go in here. And I should have four nickel plated screws. It'll hold that onto the front standard. There they are. Now I'm supporting this with my finger underneath here. Both to hold it in position and so that I'm not pushing down on those struts and bending the struts while I'm pushing on the screwdriver. Oh, 
Right, they're all in position. I'll tighten those four up. Now I can collapse the struts and I can put in the four screws that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Snip those up. You're pulling through multiple layers of leather and cloth and so forth so they don't pull up hard and tight like you would do if you were screwing two pieces of metal together. So don't overdo it. There's no point that seems the natural place to stop. Just use some caution. Okay, well that's good. And I can get my focus mount in there now. Or my focus uh, outer helical and inner helical. I have my inner and outer helical here. You can see that they're aligned up. There's my two marks and my single mark there. So that's all good. And we want some helical grease on that. So I'll just back that out some way. Wipe a bit of helical grease around here in about five or six spots around the perimeter. That should do. And work that in. Check that it's all working smoothly. Seems good. I'll wipe some on this, this surface where it sits in the focus mount and the two spots where it runs on those guide posts I'll just put a touch down there that should do yeah, I know which way up this goes because I make it do it with one scratch at the top and two scratches at the bottom. I know it goes in right there. Does it move smoothly? It appears to. So the retaining ring for that needs to just run a little bit of the uh, helical grease because it's here and handy. I'll put that around that inside edge like that. This only goes in one way. Just like that. And get the fixing screws in place. Now there's six screws hold this in position. Now these screws, countersunk head screws, are the same as the four countersunk head screws that hold the focus scale ring in position. And you want your four tidiest ones in that position because if the heads are slightly mutilated they may not grip the focus scale ring as well as they should. Although slightly mutilated screws will cause you no problem at all in this position. That's my six screws. Let's collapse that down and run those screws up snug. Now 
Our focus scale ring can go on there. We've got our alignment marks that I've described on there. One at the top, two at the bottom. You can usually also see the scars from where the screws bit into that focus scale ring there. So between those marks you should be able to get that aligned correctly. Run these screws down lightly. You do not need to screw these down tight. They just need to be nipped up. If you do those screws up tight, you'll either damage the screws, strip them past the retainer plate there, past the focus scale ring, or distort the outer helical so that the focus will be stiff. So they just need to be nipped up and no more. Check that the focus is smooth. That's all good. And this piece goes in. That's our rangefinder coupling. Two small screws hold that to the front here. They are not the same as those other screws. So make sure you've got them sort it out correctly. I'm supporting this between finger and thumb so I'm not pressing on the struts. And the bracket that moves the rangefinder. I can get the screw in there. Run that in, nip it up tight. Put a touch of grease in the track there, forward and aft of that uh, screw. You can see how that screw head moves as I move the focus scale ring. You can see that moving. As the front of the camera has collapsed, let's get this, let's get that shaft through there. As the front of the camera collapses, you'll see how that disappears down the track away, stows away neatly. Why is that not wanting to pull out correctly? Oh, that's been moved, that's why. Focus scouring had been moved. You have to watch it with any of these cameras. If you collapse the front of the camera and the door's partly open, if you move the focus scale ring, you may not be able to pull the camera all the way open again. You've got to poke your finger through there and return that to the infinity position. Otherwise the locks won't, won't get out of the way. That's moving smoothly. So we want our shaft here for the front that couples to this shaft at the back. That needs to go in next. So first of all we have this guide, guide bush. Then we have the shaft, I'm just lubricating inside there where it runs over the shaft. I'll just rump some on the, the front edge just a wee bit and some on the side there where it's going to run in that bush. It doesn't need much. Make sure that's coupled. You'll probably see the gear at the back here evolving with it. And here's the shroud that holds it in position. There are two chrome screws to go in here. I'm looking at the state of these. No, they're equally ugly. The slightly better one I'll put at the top here where it can be seen. And this uglier one I'll put down the bottom here where it cannot be seen. And they're ugly because someone poked in here with a bad screwdriver and a worse technique and um, either tried to unscrew them or put them back again afterwards. I 
and check that the focus scale ring moves smoothly no rubbing that's good I'll just nip those two screws up they're chrome brass don't overdo it if you break them you won't like the result okay so that's all done that's our focus mechanism all in position and uh, really I could put the door on at this point okay here's our door I'll just dust that out it's a bit dusty otherwise it's fine I'm just checking the state of that see if that sits there snugly it's pretty good just check those arms aren't bent out of shape right so put a touch of synthetic grease on those two pins and fit my paper washers in place well this is the original paper washer and it looks the part better so I'll put that one there and it's mate I'll put down at the bottom where it's less seen and I'll get the door clipped into place so I start that by getting the bottom pin in place then lifting the door up swinging it over and getting the top one in place now we've got two hinge pin screws we'll get the top one in position now it's not picking up the thread that's better I'm just checking the movement of the door yeah there's rattle here it needs a spacer washer to take that rattle out so I've just got to sort out a suitable spacer washer for that and I should have one here that one should do it let's try that one And that's just a space a shim to stop the door from being rattling up and down if it rattles up and down it means that the front standard can move up and down if the front standard can move up and down it means that your shutter release position will vary depending on where this is how supportive you are of the front of the camera while you're pressing on the top that all looks good and the front door should open and shut it does well I can put some synthetic grease on the tracks here the rear tracks I've already done I, I do those before I put the struts in position but I don't do these before I put the struts in position because I'll only end up wiping it off with my fingers if I was to do that that action's nice and smooth our focus is nice and smooth and the next task really is to get on to the film advance well we'll start with the film advance so here I've got the take up spool I've just put its metal bush in the base of the take up spool and put that in place in the back of the camera the shaft I normally lubricate this with graphite grease because I like the uh, the smooth feel of this grease as it works and its stickiness it sticks to the shaft um, is in no danger of squeezing out and leaving that unlubricated I'll run some into the spring itself just check the action put a bit across the top there Yeah, that moves smoothly that'll do nicely right so I'll put this up in, in the bottom of the camera now there's a slot in here and by convention that goes towards the end of the camera it doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference but um, 
things go much smoother if everything go, is, goes where people expect to find it. Just make sure that that's seated correctly, that's good. And three small screws hold that in position. Once they're all in position, the screws can be tightened up, but not before. That's good. Now, here we have the lever for our uh, rewind button. What's that bit of filth in there? Let's get rid of that and what that's doing in there. Oh, there's a, a void in the casting at that point. Okay. So taking this, and there should be some molybdenum paste here somewhere here right in front of me where I can't see it. Normally I just put a wipe on that front edge, and because it's in my hand, put some through the pivot point too. This sits on here like this. It's return spring. Looks like this. And it's held in place with a shoulder screw. And when everything's seated correctly, things move smoothly. The spring revolves around one shoulder of the screw. The lever can revolve smoothly around the other shoulder of the screw. And the screw can be tightened up. And things still move. That seems okay. I'll get that spring across and behind that tab there. Like that. It seems to move nicely. Good. Now, the sprocket shaft can go in. From the top of the camera, put my sprocket in position. The slot goes upwards. got the shaft here I'll just lubricate that. Some synthetic grease towards the base where it runs through the casting of the camera. Some towards the top. Usually I'll put a smear on that pinion just for good measure. Slide that down through the camera body, through the sprocket, until you get to the bottom. And I'm supporting that with my finger from underneath. If we pull back this lever, that shaft will pop right through. I'll just close the front of that camera so it's easier to work on here. Now I'm going to bring my sprocket shaft round until I can see the screw hole there. And the screw that drives the sprocket shaft is here. And that screw head is somewhat damaged. Whoever worked on this camera in the past Must have had some really crappy screwdrivers. Okay, so that's all good. The rewind button needs to go on the bottom of the camera now. We've got the rewind button, its return spring, and the washer. So normally, I put some grease on the spring, put the spring on the button, Put the washer on the button and this screws to the bottom of that um, sprocket shaft. So I'm just rotating the sprocket shaft there to pull the button in, checking that it moves freely, and it does. And I'll use my special pliers to hold that button while I do it up. 
Don't overdo tightening that button up because it's only brass and you'll shear the end off it without any problem at all. That's good. So that's all the shafts in at the bottom of the camera. The tripod socket can go on here. Three screws hold that in place. If you're hunting around for them amongst all the other screws, you can usually tell which ones they are because they've usually got the remains of adhesive and leather on them. These ones don't because they've been through the ultrasonic cleaner and it did a particularly good job of cleaning everything up. Get all three screws in position, then tighten them up. All there, let's tighten those. The sh little shroud that goes around the rewind button and stops the rewind button from being accidentally depressed goes on there. Two brass screws. That's where you get your Zeiss bumps on the base of the camera, those brass screw heads. Do those two screws up, don't go mad, that aluminium bends fairly easily. That's good. And our leather on the base there could be glued back down. I think that'll go quite nicely. Normally I peel them right back to here so that I don't end up with a mark, but I'm, the state of that leather, it's pretty firm. I think we're not going to have any problems with that. So I'm just wiping this over to remove any grease, and there will be oils and grease just from handling the camera, particularly while I've been working on it. So I want that off so the adhesive will stick. That looks good, and now I'll find my adhesive.